The bombing of Bahrain in World War II was part of an effort by the Italian Royal Air Force Regia Aeronautica to strike at the British interests wherever possible in the Middle East. While the mission caused little damage, it was successful in forcing the diversion of already limited Allied resources to an obscure theatre originally thought to be safe. <laughs> Background On 10 June 1940, the Kingdom of Italy declared war on the French Republic and the United Kingdom. The Italian invasion of France was short-lived and the French signed an armistice with the Italians on 25 June, three days after France's armistice with Germany. This left the British and the forces of the Commonwealth of Nations for the Italians to contend with in the Middle East. In summer 1940, the Italian leader and Prime Minister Benito Mussolini received a plan to destroy the oil fields in Bahrain in order to disrupt the oil supplies to the British Navy. The plan was suggested by the Italian test pilot, Air Force Captain Paolo Mocci. <laughs> Bahrain and Dharan, Saudi Arabia Early on October 19, 1940, four Italian SM-82s bombers attacked American-operated oil refineries in the British Protectorate of Bahrain, damaging the local refineries. The raid also struck Dharan in Saudi Arabia, but causing only some minor damage. Indeed, in order to strike the British controlled oil refineries at Manama in the Persian Gulf, these SM 82s bombers undertook a flight of 4,200 kilometres, 2,610 miles, lasting 15 hours at 270 kilometres per hour, 170 miles per hour. That was for the time arguably a record for a bombing mission. Each aircraft carried a load of 1,500 kilograms 3,310 pounds. This long-range action was successful, taking the target totally by surprise, and the SM-82s landed without problems at Zula, Eritrea. The Italian airplanes started their flight from Europe, attacked refineries in Asia and landed back in Africa Italian Eritrea. During the attack were dropped 132 bombs of 15 kg, that heavily damaged two refineries the raid caused the Allies some concerns, forcing them to upgrade their defences. This, more than the limited amount of damage caused, further stretched Allied military resources. The Italian command intended to employ the special SM-82s to bomb the English oil plants of Manama, in the Persian Gulf, in order to show the potential ability of the Italian Air Force. It was a long and difficult mission involving a 4,000 km flight. Ettore Muti and his comrades spent four days working on a complete revision of the plans and established a complex flight plan. On December 18, at 5.10 pm, after filling both the normal and the supplementary tanks, they loaded three out of four SM-82s with 1.5 tons of incendiary and explosive bombs weighing 15, 20 or 50 kg. Then the four three-engine bombers took off, in command of the first aircraft, which gained height with difficulty from the Rhodes Gadara runway because it was overloaded with 19,500 kg, was Lieutenant Colonel Muti. He was assisted by Major Giovanni Rayner and by Captain Paolo Mochi, who had previous experience in flying planes overloaded up to 21 tons. The SM-82s, after gaining height a maneuver which took remarkable efforts because of the enormous weight of the aircraft headed east, flying over Cyprus, Lebanon and Syria, bending to the southeast as they went past Jordan and Iraq until they reached the Persian Gulf. During the very long outward flight, the role of Muti's SM-82 Pathfinder proved its essential function in leading the squadron. At 2.20 a.m., just before reaching the Bahrain Islands, Lt. Col. Federici's aircraft suddenly lost sight contact with Muti's SM-82 and had to drop its bombs on different Saudi Arabia targets in the vicinity of Manama, while the other planes hit the fixed target. As Bombardier Rayner later told, "...the operation of spotting the target was easy thanks to the total illumination of the extractive and refinery plants." which were partially damaged by the bombs half a dozen wells and some oil deposits were set on fire. As soon as they perceived the glares of the first explosions, the Italian planes made off along the escape route landing to the Zula runway Eritrea at 8.840, the whole Italian formation had flown 2,400 km in 15.30 hours. 
At the Eritrean airport, along with a small crowd of Italian aviators, the brave pilots found the 4th SM-82 squadron which, in the meantime, had come from Rhodes as a support plane on the way back, should one of the crafts make an emergency landing in the desert. Alberto Rosselli Rome declared that their bombers had set a new distance record, covering 3,000 miles on the outgoing trip from bases located in the island of Rhodes. American magazine, Time, wrote that the Italians insisted that the planes had been refueled from submarine tankers though in actuality, the planes had simply been loaded with fuel. Ettore Muti, party secretary of the National Fascist Party, took part in the Bahrain raid and in at least one of the bombings of Haifa. In the early days of the war, one major success that went a long way to allowing the Italians to make a major fight in North Africa was the long-range bombing missions launched by Lt. Col. Ettore Muti on Palestine and Bahrain which did severe damage to British port facilities and oil refineries. This caused the British considerable logistical problems but also forced them to divert resources to defend the Middle East which were badly needed elsewhere. It also helped relieve the threat to the shipping lanes in the Mediterranean, allowing Italian forces to be moved to North Africa with very few losses. BJR Research Omnia The Bahrain raid was followed by other long-distance Italian raids on Ethiopia and Eritrea in 1942, and would have been repeated with an advanced SM.82 bomber in a raid on New York City in summer 1943 had Italy not capitulated in 1943. Even a commercial aerial trip was done between Rome and Tokyo in summer 1942. See also Italian bombing of Mandatory Palestine in World War II Italian Royal Air Force Regia Aeronautica Footnotes Topic. Bibliography Lembo, Daniele. SIAISM.82 Marsupial. Aere nella storia. Issue 22. Parma, Italy, West Ward Edizioni, 2002, p. 10 31.